At the moment, the largest stem cell research agency in the world is CIRM, or the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, a multi-billion dollar agency that was voted into existence in 2004 by the citizens of California. We are an agency that was created to help uh, patients, and our mission is to accelerate stem cell treatments to those patients with unmet medical needs. Since their inception more than a decade ago, they've faced some criticism from the media for what they perceive as a lack of progress, with the LA Times calling them a $6 billion public investment that was born in hype. But it appears the mainstream media hasn't truly investigated why CIRM's efforts are moving so slow. Welcome to the December board meeting. For CIRM. This observation was further confirmed when we found ourselves to essentially be one of the only members of the media attending CIRM's 2015 Science Subcommittee board meeting in Los Angeles. CIRM's board consists of a colorful assortment of members, from doctors and scientists, retired Senator Art Torres, former CEO of Paramount Pictures Sherry Lansing, to actress, writer, director Lauren Miller, Seth Rogen's wife. At the time of this meeting, CIRM announced the commencement of 15 clinical trials, three of which involve fetal stem cells. While CIRM has plenty of money and influential people at the helm, they repeatedly expressed that their biggest impediment isn't science or money, but the FDA, a regulatory agency that continues to insist on applying the drug development model for a conventional drug to stem cell treatments, which is like forcing a round peg into a square hole. 70% of respondents uh, to our surveys uh, listed FDA as the single biggest impediment to developing stem cell therapies. From the time we discover a stem cell product that looks promising to the time we can actually get an IND approved by the FDA to where we can start, uh, we can start doing clinical trials. That right now for stem cell therapies is too long. It's somewhere between six to eight years. The industry average for anything that's not a stem cell is 3.2 years. And so we look at that and we say, okay, that's a problem. Cell therapies are either, either essentially unregulated uh, by FDA and very little regulation. Take you less than $100,000 and take you less than three months uh, to comply. Or they are excessively regulated by FDA. Um, where it costs greater than a billion dollars and it, it takes longer than, 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 than 12 years. And there's nothing in between. And all of the other disciplines of, of medicine have something uh, in between. In other words, to address this growing field, in 2001, the FDA created a new tiered approach paradigm to deal with the approval of stem cell therapies by allowing certain stem cell therapies they deem safe, like adult stem cells, to simply exist without regulation. While most all other stem cell technologies, including fetal stem cells, are forced to go through at least a 12-year, $1 billion regulatory process just to reach the market. We also know that stem cell therapies, from a commercial standpoint, uh, uh, clear, uh, clearly uh, are, are, are a disadvantage. So big pharma uh, companies will uh, disproportionately in license non-cell technologies at a much greater rate than, than, than cell technologies. Only 8% of CIRM's programs actually have partners. The reason there is no commercial interest is because stem cells are just biology that anyone with the proper resources can harness. They simply can't be patented or placed into the current monopoly-driven pharmaceutical paradigm. The very idea that an increasing number of people are discovering this technology, many of whom no longer require the pharmaceutical medications they were expected to be prescribed for the rest of their lives, is an extremely frightening reality to the current business paradigm the pharmaceutical industry has relied on for decades. And since the FDA's Drug Evaluation Department has literally been purchased by the pharmaceutical industry due to Congress passing the Drug User Fee Act, with nearly $1 billion of the FDA's annual $1.3 billion drug evaluation budget coming directly from the pharmaceutical industry it is supposed to be regulating, there is no logical reason the medical industry is going to loosen its reins on this groundbreaking technology anytime soon.
In fact, the FDA recently began providing members of the U.S. Congress with one-sided information, reporting only the dangers of stem cell treatments, much of which was outdated and does not reflect what is documented in the clinical literature. These actions cast the FDA in a very unfavorable light and seem to make it appear that they are actively lobbying against a therapeutic modality for which they are responsible for fostering. We're not anti-regulation, we're not anti-FDA, um, but we, we also will not ignore that there's a problem. We reject outright the notion that a regulatory pathway that takes over 15 years and costs over two billion dollars is the only way to go. That's not, that's not an acceptable approach. The demand, the need is very real. Patients really are suffering, they really are desperate, they really do need help. The entities, the researchers and the companies that have the solutions view in, in some respects the barriers between uh, their, their current therapies and those patients as insurmountable. Then lastly, with respect to centers uh, that operate um, uh, either overseas or underneath the jurisdiction of, of, of FDA, that is a symptom of the problem. Uh, they take their products and their technologies overseas where they're not, uh, they're not uh, subject to the same regulatory constraints. The common denominator is we're not doing anything that's meaningfully advancing the field and helping the patients. Due to this reality, people like Lawrence Simon, who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a few years ago, aren't going to just sit around waiting for any well-meaning agency to catch up and alter a regulatory system that doesn't want to change. Have you spoken to your doctor about what you're doing? I have. There's no tremor, which there was initially. How about your grasp? Squeeze. Good. Very good strength there. Very good. Ordinarily, in your experience, if you don't mind me asking, Go ahead. Um, considering how many years ago he's been diagnosed, 2011, like, what do you usually see? Some people will just go on down the trail and become worse and worse and worse and become better, which I have seen. And they'll fail every therapy. He's basically reached, I would say, a plateau and stabilized where he's no longer declining. I'm very impressed with what I'm looking at, I gotta tell you. And I've been at it 50 years almost, that ought to tell you something. And he's been my patient for about 30. So what do we say about all this? I don't know, except to say that there's something that works here. I don't think it's anything we're giving him, I really don't. From what I've seen and the failures I've seen, I'm pleased. <laughs> what else can I tell you? No, that's all I wanted to hear is just you be honest. And tell no, me, I'll tell know. you the truth. If I thought it was crap, I'd tell you that too. I'm the first one. Ask him. I see a lot of stuff that's bogus. I was not, in the beginning, enthusiastic about all this. I said, well, if you got the money to waste, go ahead. But then again, you're talking about a disease you can't cure So, with what we have, so why not? And I'm, you know, proof of the pudding. I haven't seen anybody get this well. Now, you think I was a salesman for the thing. But, <laughs> but you know what? Salesman, no salesman. I'm glad to see him better. Whatever it takes. And you wouldn't let him walk without assistance. So look where we are today. The MRI was diagnostic. He had lesions uh, all over the place. In January 2011, after experiencing weakness and vertigo, Lawrence's neurologist ordered an MRI, which would find many areas of abnormality favoring active disease. Numerous lesions and plaques were found, representing active multiple sclerosis. A few weeks after this appointment, on March 25th, Lawrence had another MRI, which found no new areas of abnormality and no abnormal lesions.